Welcome to this Adobe After Effects CS5 tutorial and what we're going to be doing today is I've had a few people ask me about the space project that I did. Actually I did the solar system and you can really find this thing all over the internet now. Apparently everybody in the world has done this but I guess there's not that many people doing tutorials on it. So I had a few people email me and this is what we're going to do and this is obviously Earth and I did the entire solar system starting from the sun back and here we have obviously the moon rotating around the earth with an atmosphere uh, atmosphere <laughs> atmosphere with an atmosphere a star filled and of course a glow so let's get started on this pretty simple to do shouldn't take that long and the first thing we're going to do is go into after effects and let's open up a new composition uh, I have this one set to 1200 frames long and I'm doing this in 720 you can do it in just about whatever you want and we'll just call this Earth, lack of a better name. And let's go ahead and make a star field. First thing we're going to do is go to Layer, New, Solid. And let's get a black solid, and we'll call this Stars. Click OK. And actually, I got this from Andrew Kramer perusing his website. I used to go through and make these intricate star fields, and pretty much take me a lifetime to do it. And I guess mostly because I was just really bored at the time. And I was perusing his site and saw him do it in about three seconds. It looked pretty good. I thought, eh, what does he know that I don't? Probably a lot. So anyway, we have our layer here. Now we're going to go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. Okay, here's our Fractal Noise. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Transform. And we're going to bring the scale down to about 3%. After we do that, we're going to go here. We have our contrast and our brightness. If you start to bring your brightness down, you'll see it's kind of start to give you a little starry look here. And let's bring the contrast up, really brighten those stars up, bring them up quite a bit. Let's bring the brightness down a little further. And you just mess around with the brightness to get as many stars as you want. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to start to bring in our assets for our planet. So we're going to go to File, Import, File, and I'm going to go to my Textures folder, Planet Textures, and we'll go to grab Earth. Now what I did is I went on the internet and I just did a Google search for high-res Earth texture, high-res moon texture, high-res atmosphere texture, and you can find them. There's lots of them out there. And so find them, download them, you're good to go. All right, so we have our Earth map imported. So we're going to drag it down on top of our stars. Here's the Earth here. So now we just need to turn it into a sphere. So if you go over here to Effects and Presets, you type in CC Sphere. It'll bring it up, drag it right on top of the Earth. There's your Earth. Round it out, takes care of everything for you. Pretty simple thing there. All right, so now we need to add an atmosphere onto it. So we're basically going to do the same thing again. File, Import, File. And let's go back to the textures. Let's go to Clouds. Here's my clouds. Open. Drag them down on top of the Earth. Same thing again. CC Sphere. Drag it on top. There we have it. All right. Well, as you can see here, it's all black and white. We don't have any opacity to this. And this in itself is a good planet to have if you have space invaders or aliens or attacking a planet you need to blow it up. If you use the atmosphere one here and you can go to effect, color correction, let's add a tint and we want to want to keep the black. So we take the white and we add it over to red. Look at there. A lot of things you can do with that one there. That's a good one. For this we don't need it though so we're going to delete the tint and what we're going to do is we're going to have to lower the opacity so we can see the earth underneath it. So we take our clouds and we're going to hit T for opacity. I don't get it either. And we're going to lower our opacity down to about 49%. Now you can see it underneath it. And what we have to do is we have to make our, our clouds just a little bigger than our planet. We can do this two ways because obviously the clouds aren't sitting flat on the surface. We can go up to radius up in the top under our effects and we can 
change that to 203, 205, and it'll make our atmosphere just a little bigger than our planet, or change that back to 200. You can highlight your scale, hit, I mean your clouds, hit S for scale. That one does make sense. Type in 103, 104, 105, whatever, and you can see it makes it a little bigger. So you can do this two ways. So I'm going to change that back to 100. I'm going to go to my radius and set it to 203. That looks pretty good for me. All right, so now we have our atmosphere and we have our planet. So now we're going to bring in our moon. And once again, it's the same exact way. I found it by doing a search for a high-res moon image. And I got pretty lucky on this one. Import, file, and we're going to go back to our planet's textures. No, the moon is not a planet, but it's round and I figure it belongs with the rest of them. So let's go down, find our moon. Now I have a 4K moon image, which is very high res, which you'll see here in a second. This is really a good moon image, extremely high res. So this one's really nice. So leave it like it is. Don't worry about scaling it. Drag CC sphere right on top of it. Now we have a moon. Okay, one problem we have here is everything is the same size. So what we're going to do is we need to fix this. And in order to fix this, we're going to have to, we can bring the radius down here at the moon. And we'll bring this down to, say, 25. So we can get this more in line with the scale it needs to be. All right. So now that we have this scale down, we're going to come over here and we're going to make the moon, clouds, and the earth. We're going to make them all 3D layers. And we're going to add a camera, layer, new, camera. We're going to leave this really wide at 24 millimeters. Click OK. And then if we go to active camera, if we go to the top view, and zoom out a little bit, you'll see everything is on the same plane. And that's not a good thing. What we have to do is we have to bring our moon out, obviously, in front of our planets so we can rotate it. So highlight the moon. Grab your Z handle and pull it out in the Z space. Bring it out. And for right now, we'll just set it at the front of the viewport. Go back to the active camera. Zoom back in. And you can see it's a little closer. Not a lot. All right, now we can take it from here. And what we need to do is we need to start orbiting the moon around the planet. All right? So the best way to do this is now that we have everything in 3D, is to go back to the top view, zoom out, highlight the moon. Okay, now that we have it highlighted, what we're going to do is we're going to hit P for position, and we're going to set a keyframe at zero. Now, since I have this 1200, we're going to break this up into fourths. So now that we have it there, we're going to go, our next keyframe will be at 300. Move it to the right, and move it back. And you see our path starting to come in here. Now we're going to move it up another fourth. We're going to go to 600. And we're going to move it back. Move it to the center. Move again to 900. And we're just going to come over to the left. Bring it down. Then we're going to go to our last frame, which actually is going to be 1199. And we're going to bring it down, and we're going to bring it across. All right, and now you can see we have this nice little square happening here. Now, one thing you want to check is make sure that your ending point is the same as your starting point. And the easy way to do that is while you're in the top view here, hit Command-R on a Mac to bring up your ruler. Go over to the ruler, and you'll see your mouse pointer will change over. Click and drag out. And we can bring this out, go to the top, do the same thing. Set it at your starting point with your uh, time indicator at zero. Then when you move it around, you can see where you end. And see, we're just a little bit off. So we just need to line that back up. That's pretty good. Now to get rid of these guides, just click on them, drag them back off to the side and top. Command R, get rid of your ruler again. And now you can see that our stop and starting point is in the same place. Now I know what you're saying. This is square. This is not an orbit. Well, it really doesn't matter that much in here because we're not in true 3D. So we'll switch back to the active camera. 
we'll zoom this back in a little bit and we'll do a quick RAM preview show you what I mean and there you can see it looks like it's moving around because it is moving away off to the side so it does give you the appearance that it is going around the earth all right now what we need to do to complete this is we need to add a rotation to our earth and our clouds so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click the earth highlight it go back up to CC sphere under your effect controls and we're going to go to rotation now what we're going to do is the Y rotation is what we want and we're going to make sure we're at zero click the stopwatch go all the way to the end and set here where it says one times then plus 0.0, .0 degrees we're going to set that to one because we want one full rotation it'll automatically add in the keyframe for you at the end and then when we scrub through here you'll see we have rotation so now we have the earth rotating all right so now let's get rotation on our atmosphere now we want our atmosphere to rotate a little faster than our planet so back at zero go back to rotation set a keyframe for the Y move all the way to the end and now we're going to set this for two full rotations enter now we'll have the two rotations there so when we come back to the beginning we'll do a quick RAM preview okay now you can see we have rotation the atmosphere is moving faster than our planet which we want it and the moon's rotating around the planet now obviously this is all happening kind of fast uh, you'll probably want this to go a little slower and to add as much realism as you possibly can all right one last thing a couple last things we're going to do here is first we're going to go to the moon and we're going to add a little rotation to the moon also so we're going to go up to effects we're going to set a keyframe at zero under y and we're going to go all the way to the end and we'll just set this at one now at this scale you're not going to be able to see it but if you were to bring your camera in really close if we go back to the top and let's say you were to bring your camera in because you want to get a really good close-up of what's going on and go back to the active well now we're going to have the moon's quite going to be quite a bit bigger here and then you'll be able to um, see the rotation of it now it looks a little blurry here because I've got the camera shot in really close and this has been scaled down so low uh, from its original size so obviously it's gonna start to pixelate pretty bad so in order to compensate for that you'll need to increase the size of the moon and then move everything back in C space Z space and then you'll be able to get your detail back so now back to this okay so here we're pretty much finished we have a uh, rotation everything's moving like it should and what we're, the only thing we want to do is you might want to add a glow like I have in mind uh, to the planet it's pretty simple to do uh, all you gotta do is go to the earth and we're gonna hit command D for duplicate another one that makes sense as opposed to T opacity and we're gonna grab the bottom earth here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a glow to this earth so let's just go ahead and solo the layer and let's go to effect stylize glow and you can see our glow starting to come in here now what we're going to do is we are going to put the glow off of the alpha channel and we need to come in here to our color a white and let's make that just a real nice light blue sky blue like that and let's grab the black and let's just turn it into a dark blue and that gives us our glow let's unsolo the layer turn everything back on you can see you have a little bit of a glow there already but what you can do is you can come in and start to pull up your glow radius and then really crank out your radius it'll start to glow up you can raise the intensity just got to kind of mess with it kind of figure out exactly what you want that's a lot of glow for me so I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit more a little more than I like and there you have it do another really fast partial RAM preview show you a segment of that now one last thing you see that that does move pretty fast so if you wanted to slow all this down you're gonna to want to lengthen your comp the best way to do this is go to composition composition settings choose a new duration what we'll do is we'll double this which will slow down our speed by half as much and we'll go to 2400 and now we're going to come up here above our timeline stretch everything back out and we're going to highlight click stars go up to camera hold shift click camera 
and bring everything to the end of our comp now. Okay, once we have this done, go in and hit U on the keyboard, and it's going to bring up all of our keyframes. Now we need to move everything to the end, so the first thing we're going to do is move our rotation out. So highlight the keyframe, hold shift, and grab the rotation keyframes, just the last ones, and we're going to pull them all the way to the end. Alright, now we've slowed our rotation down, but the orbit of our moon is still the same speed. So how we're going to slow that down is we're going to click and drag, highlight all the keyframes of the position of the moon. And we're going to hold down Option, click the last keyframe, and pull it out. And it leaves all the keyframes relative to the one next to it. So it all comes out the same, and it'll even our speed out all the way around. So now if we do a quick RAM preview, okay, you can see it's slowed down by half. And if you want to make it slower, do the same thing again. You can go out, double it, drag everything back out, and you'll slow it down by half its speed again. That's all there is. Pretty simple tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it. And look for the tutorials coming up. I'm going to be doing one soon on the Roto Brush, which is a absolutely fantastic tool. I'm very glad that uh, Adobe decided to include that because when you're rotoscoping, boy, it saves you a lot of time. So until next time, have a good day.